If you've ever had a cap gun that uses a roll of paper caps, you are a first-hand user of the Maynard Tape Priming System. Now, this system was adopted with the U.S. Model 1855 series of muskets and carbines, and it was used in the 1855 rifle musket. As we come out of the Mexican-American War, U.S. military forces are using the Model 1842 Springfield, which is a 69 caliber smoothbore musket, percussion primed, so there's been development in that element. But we're still dealing with a large bore smoothbore musket. And as we get into the 1850s, it's clear that there needs to be an update to the main service arm of the United States Army. James Burton, a machinist who's a native Pennsylvanian, is working at the Harpers Ferry Armory. Uh, he helps further develop the French mini ball and comes up with this concept of a new standard infantry arm for the American Army. The traditional flintlock smoothbore musket really had an effective range in the 50 yard range. A rifled muzzleloader could extend that range to literally hundreds of yards. And the uh, Model 1855 rifle musket was the first U.S. military widely adopted rifled long arm. In terms of the Model 1855, the mechanism is really just fascinating because rather than using the standalone percussion priming cap, it incorporates what's called the Maynard Tape Primer System. And what the Maynard Tape Primer allows soldiers to do is to use a roll of uh, little percussion caps, essentially. And that roll is fed up through the lock plate of the rifle musket. And there's a little gear mechanism inside the lock that turns as the hammer is cocked. And the gear is calibrated so that as it turns, the percussion priming cap actually rolls up to the next available cap and places it right over the nipple of the rifle. So in theory, it makes the operation of the musket a whole lot faster. One of the oddities of the 1855 is the fact that you would have thought, somebody would have thought the Maynard tape priming system out just a little bit harder than they did. Even as an eight-year-old kid with a cap gun, I knew that the Maynard tape priming system was crap in the rain. And why anybody in 1855 thought that would work in a gun when your life depends on it remains beyond me. But obviously and thankfully for the gun itself, it was able to still maintain percussion caps as a primary form of ignition. A couple elements of the 1855 end up showing up in later firearms uh, throughout the Civil War. One of the most notable examples is in the hammer design on the Springfield Model 1861. Compared to other rifle muskets of the era, a lot of observers will notice that the 1861 Springfield has this really high arch in its hammer. The whole reason for that arch being there was the 1855 muskets are in service, they get broken, they don't want to make a whole new musket, so if they can repair the guns that come in from the field, they will. And with that high arch in the 61 hammer, you can actually use that as a replacement part on the Model 1855s, and it will still allow for clearance of that Maynard tape primer system and that hinged door. At the outbreak of the Civil War, there were two federal arsenals making guns. One was the Springfield Armory, and the other was in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. When Virginia seceded from the Union, uh, Harpers Ferry was a place that the Confederates wanted to get to. Uh, so you have the Confederates moving on Harpers Ferry, the superintendent, wants everything destroyed so the Confederates couldn't get it, they couldn't move it out of there. And you have James Burton, who was a Confederate sympathizer, trying to save the machinery. In the end, the Confederates capture Harper's Ferry and take all the available tooling and they ship it to Richmond, Virginia. And the tooling and the gauging for the 1855 rifle musket become the basis of the CS Richmond musket. These are guns made by the Confederate States government to equip its troops. But the gauging that they had was for the 1855. So when you look at a CS Richmond rifle musket, 
you see that there's this sort of mess up at the top of the lock plate. And that's because they were gauging for the 1855, but not putting the Maynard tape priming system in there. So the lock plates of a CS Richmond musket looks unfinished. And that's because it was. <laughs>